Brothers, sisters in Christ, it's called the most famous goal in soccer history. 2011, FIFA Women's World Cup. The U.S. is down by one goal with one minute left. Lose, and we're out. Our striker, Megan Rapino gets the ball about 40 yards away from the Brazilian goal. She corrals it and with one touch of her left foot sends a perfect cross right in front of the goal. Two Brazilian defenders come out to get the ball away. And yet somehow, Abby Wambach gets her head in there just so slightly, heads it into the goal, and the stadium goes bonkers. There are millions of views of that moment on YouTube. The most incredible goal from the most prolific goal scorer in FIFA history, men and women. No one scores more goals than Abby. No one has brought more young girls to soccer than Abby. She is the Michael Jordan of her sport. Abby retired this week. She retired on Wednesday. Her final game was actually in New Orleans against China. And when someone like, like a Derek Jeter, like a Michael Jordan retires, you watch the post game. What do you say? How do you end a legacy that no one has topped and might not even come close? I don't know why I watched the post game. I don't know why I expected some humility. I don't know why I hoped that Abby would use that stage to pass off a little credit. That's just not how people are. I mean, you've seen that, right? You've seen the post-game awards. You've seen the locker room interviews. You've seen people when we get glory. How does our society function? We like credit. We like glory. You see somebody get an award at a music show, you almost know how it happens. They get the award, they, they might thank their spouse, maybe God, maybe not. And then essentially they thank themselves. I've worked hard, i put a lot of effort, we really came together, we are awesome. Thank you for recognizing my awesomeness. That's great. That's just how people are, isn't it? That when you get the spotlight, you keep it. When you get the glory, you grab it. When you get your opportunity, when the whole world's watching, you take the podium on Wednesday night and you tell people just how awesome you are. What if there was someone who wasn't like that? What if there was someone who was humble and just passed off the credit? What if there was someone who, who actually didn't want the stage? What if there was someone who had the greatest amount of glory and said, no thanks, it's not due to me. Could such a person like that exist? No, of course not, right? We're, we're Americans. We're worldwide. We are people that want credit. So whether you're a soccer star or a business star, you want the glory, don't you? And then you read this story. You read this story that seems so out of place in today's world. A story of a woman who gets higher glory than Abby Wamba. A story of a woman who gets the greatest spotlight. A story of a woman who gets the greatest stage. This woman is chosen to be the mother of God. Mary has the greatest spotlight in the world. Mary, what should you do? You should capitalize on it, right? You're going to have Jesus. There is money to be made. You need to get a PR person. You need to start a reality show. You need to start putting your pictures out there and let people know you can see baby Jesus for a small fee, right? If people will spend millions for a Kardashian, if people will spend millions to see a little British baby, they will certainly spend money to see Jesus. I mean, come on, Mary. You got money coming in here. You're going to be the mother of God. But she doesn't. She almost doesn't want the stage. 
she almost doesn't want the glory. She's given this incredible blessing, and she almost steps off the stage and says, it's not about me. When she's told she is going to be the mother of God, when she gets this message, what is her response? My soul glorifies the Lord. You almost hear her saying, it's not about me, not little old me. It's about God. It's about his goodness. It's about his grace. Because you know what? He has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Little old me. He remembered little old me. These are words for every anxious Christian. These are words for every depressed Christian. These are words for every Christian who feels a bit unworthy. He remindful of the humble state of his servant. God would choose Mary. Why Mary? We don't know anything about her. She's about as anonymous, nondescript of a woman you can find in the Bible. We don't know her parents. We don't know her hometown. We don't know her family lineage. We know nothing about Mary. Almost like that's God's point. I mean, God could have chosen a princess. God could have chosen a rich girl. God could have chosen a woman with connections. But instead, he picks the woman nobody knows about. He picks the woman that has no flair. He picks the woman that is about as normal as normal can be. And you're going to be the mother of God. He picks, and she shows her roots, doesn't she? That when she gets the spotlight, she turns it back to Jesus. That when she gets the glory, she gives it back to God. That when she gets the credit, there is not a breath about her and her song. It is entirely about what God has given to her. Here is an example of faith. Here is a story for mothers to tell their daughters. Here is a story for grandmothers to tell their granddaughters. Here is faith. That when she gets on the highest stage, she steps off. When she gets the highest glory, this awesome Christian woman says, it's not about me. It is entirely about God. That's what makes Mary so different. She's different from Abby. She's different from Princess Kate. She's different from Kim Kardashian. She's different from almost anybody else in this world. When she gets incredible glory, she doesn't hold an ounce of it. She gives all of it back to God. Makes me wonder how we would do. Makes me wonder if we would get such a blessing. If you would be chosen to be so important in the Savior, what would you say? What would your acceptance speech be? Would it be like Mary? Would you say, just been mindful a little old me? Would you say, I really had nothing to do with it? Would you say, I really don't deserve anything at all? Would you say that? Or would we say, you know what? It is about time I got recognized. You know what? It is about time I get appreciated. You know what? I've been kind of working for a long time, and I'm glad that someone recognizes me for who I am. <laughs> it's really easy to pick on athletes. It's really easy to pick on celebrities for being glory hounds. It's a lot harder to look in the mirror. It's a lot harder to look in the mirror and say, do I want the same glory? Look in the mirror, my friend. Look in your mirror as, as a student, as an employee, as a homemaker, as a retiree. Look in the mirror and say, am I a person who doesn't want the glory? Am I a person that gives it all to God? Or am I a person that secretly wants it, but just wants to look humble? I tell you, I have to look in the mirror this morning. We have a number of new members joining us today. That's an awesome thing. 
That's all the God's glory, all the God's credit. And yet a part of me wants to take some credit for that. A part of me wants to say, well, I must have done, or, or, or certainly it was me, or how could they not? A, a part of me says, I want the spotlight. I want the credit for what God has done. And that's wrong, my friends. That's sinful. And I'm sorry for it. But when I look in the mirror and I see this heart, I see I want the glory. When you look in the mirror as a student, when you look in the mirror as an employee, when you look in the mirror as a friend, do you see the same thing I do? When you get those good grades in school, do you want your fellow students to know so they think how smart you are? When you get that promotion at, in your job, do you, you make sure that's in the Christmas letter so everybody knows how successful you are. When you moved up the ladder to the next stage in the game, whatever it is, earn life, do you like it when your friends compliment you on how far you've come? We do, don't we? We want the glory. We want the credit. And that's wrong. And that's sinful. And we're sorry. Or maybe for you parents. Do you see as your children grow up, do you see as they grow and get successful and get useful and beneficial, do you say, I'm a part of that? You see the glory that they're given and say, it's because of me. They're smart because of me. They've got a good work ethic because of me. They're useful at their job or at their sport because of me. The, the kids get all the glory, which should go to God, but we as parents say, oh, it, it's because of me that my child's successful. When you look in the mirror, do you see that in yourself? That's sin. That's wrong. That we're sorry for. It's easy to pick on the celebrities and athletes. It's a lot harder to look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and not just see bags under eyes, not just see hair we don't like, not just see too much weight we'd rather lose. To look in the mirror and actually see our sin. To see the way that God looks at us. The way we want glory. Only thing left to say here, friends, is Christ have mercy. Only thing left to say here, friends, is Lord have mercy. Only thing left to say is Christ have mercy. Here is our sin, Father. We're sorry. Please forgive us. And then our Father speaks these uplifting words that touch your heart. Our Father speaks these wonderful words and he says, you are forgiven. Not will be. Not could be. Not maybe. He says, you are forgiven. You are forgiven because of my son. My son who was born. My son who lived. My son who died. My son who suffered in your place. That's what gives you forgiveness. I punished him. I don't punish you. I visited your sins on him. I don't visit them on you. I killed him. I don't kill you. God says, you are forgiven. Here is what my son did for you. Forgiveness of sins purchased on the cross. That's yours. That's yours by faith. That's yours, and the devil cannot take that away from you. Let that sink in a little bit. Let's make sure we get that. Because we walk in a world where people carry such anxiety. We walk in a world where people carry such worry. They carry such guilt. They think, how could anyone love me? How could I be useful? How could I even have a purpose? And God says, here is my forgiveness. Here is my love. I mean, isn't, isn't that the story of Mary? Isn't that the point of why God chose Mary? He didn't choose her because he was, she was a strong woman. He didn't choose her because she was successful. He didn't choose her because she was worth it. He chose her because he's merciful. He chose her because he's gracious. 
He chose her because that is the essence of God, to forgive and to love. And if God can choose an anonymous woman, if God can choose a nondescript woman and bless and forgive, God chooses anonymous and nondescript men. God chooses anonymous and nondescript men and women too. That's the grace of it. Let no one say I'm not worthy enough for God. God says I forgive. Let no one say my past is too bad. God says I forgive. Let no one say I can't possibly be worth God's time. God says I forgive. I chose this nobody and put her on the highest stage because that's how I operate. That's how I am. That's how I view my children is that I bless and I forgive. God chose this nobody of a woman and he gave her glory and honor. He made her this living, walking example of faith. I see a hundred other living, walking examples of faith in front of me. People that come from backwater towns, people that come from backwater pasts, people that come from all sorts of lives and all sorts of experiences. But one thing in common that we relish God's mercy. That we know the depths out of which God has rescued us and continues to love us. That we see the grace in Mary and so we see the grace in our hearts and lives as well. And so we follow Mary's example. Yes, men, I'm telling you, follow a woman's example. Live the life of Mary. Have the faith of Mary. Give God the glory. Grab none of it for yourself. Don't hold any of it. Don't try to reach where it's not yours. Give God the glory, just like Mary did. That means when Christmas comes around and someone's talking to you about how your year's been, you don't say it's about me. No, it's about God. I would have messed it up a long time ago. But you know what? God's got me through another year. That means when your friend texts you, and asks what you got for Christmas, you tell them Jesus. And then you say whatever else you got. That means when you call your grandma or your friend around Christmas time and they ask how things are going, you tell them exactly how God feels about you before you say anything else. This is the awesomeness of God, that he rescues us from such sin. And now in our lives, we give him the glory. He has chosen us. He has blessed us. He has remembered the humble state of his servants. Give God the glory. Amen. Please stand.